Okay, good morning everyone. Wanted to do a quick video on how to set valve timing on a twin cam engine without timing marks. Uh, this is a good thing to do to double double check yourself. Okay, so basically I'm just going to jump right into it. Obviously, there's the four cylinder on a Toyota for a F, FE, uh, yeah, non corroborated FE1. Uh, basically, I want to run through some, some specs, you know, how to set valve timing without um, your know, timing marks. Okay, now this one motor is running. I'm just uh, doing a solid head retalk on this after replacing the head gasket. So uh, I know the motor is working, but I did put this one back on. Uh, is timing marks you can see the one there and at the bottom i know it's on tdc because uh, this one lined up i didn't take the valve off so we're going to use that to check ourselves but i'm going to run through the thing explaining how the valve timing and everything works okay so basically obviously you've got your four cylinders one two three four left to right and this is a four stroke engine so you've got your intake cycle your uh, intake compression combustion and exhaust right so in order to set this one um on uh, uh fire or to basically get it to the firing position uh some of the one has to be a tdc now keeping in mind you've got the crankshaft kind of looks like this so your one and four will be at the top and two and three will be at the bottom so one we want to get to fire now on a tw on the single cylinder this is a, 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 a overhead camshaft it's it's a relatively easy thing you know you just take the 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 uh, lobes point away from the camshaft and then you know you're pretty much good to go um but with the twin cam with opposite rotating directions because this one is being run off the belt, right? So as this turns, it's going to turn that way and indirectly turn that camshaft off the, the clockwise direction when this is turning anti-clockwise. No, this is this is turning clockwise. Right? Clockwise and that's turning anti-clockwise. So keep that in mind. So basically, your obviously your firing and your rocking will be at 9 degrees interval. So basically, uh, when the cylinder is firing, your lobes will be there. Uh, when it's exhausting, it'll be there. Uh, intake... Yeah, that, well, on the exhaust camshaft, basically, it gets it gets confusing, but I'm hopefully I'll be able to work through everything with you, so you'll be able to understand it. Okay, so let's look at some of the one here. The lobes on this side. Let me get this side right. So if you look at this side, both lobes are pointing that way. Now, if you had two individual camshafts, these lobes would actually be pointing that way. Because if you think now, if if your cylinder one is on firing, the next stroke is going to be the exhaust. So in order to check that your exhaust stroke needs to be the next stroke. So it's once the piston fires, the piston will move down. As it moves down, the cam will turn, opening your valves on the exhaust upstroke cycle. So basically this one, we're pointing away from there at uh, a 90 degree interval. Now what's nice is uh, there is timing marks you need to check these. So I did put them here. Uh, if you look there, are two little dots and they need to line up. Now from that it looks a little bit out um, and you'll see that this lobe is pointing a little bit upwards and a little bit down. So that tells me this one maybe needs to go a little bit more uh, anti-clockwise just as marks line up. So that's a good thing to check, you know, um, with the marks line up before you like would start an engine. Okay, and then basically uh, onto your intake side. Now this is your exhaust side. So after firing comes exhaust. So basically this one, keeping in mind that this cam is now rotating that way, this one is now turning rotating that way. So your intake cam will be rotating in an anti-clockwise manner. Therefore, meaning that you need to do. Uh, I think three cycles right it gets a bit tricky but once you've done it a few times you know you get the hang of it so basically it's now your uh, compression stroke which means that it fires and as it moves it fires it exhausts and then your intake stroke should be next uh, let me see if I got this right yeah so basically this is now your combustion stroke your exhaust stroke and then your intake stroke will start um, run about that area there right after this one's complete so that's one way to check it now if you if you had basically the timing belt running off both i think i'm repeating myself now but if the timing belt running off both cams these lobes will be pointing that way because then both cams are rotating in the same direction now important thing to look here or that i didn't mention yet is when one is on fire so the one is on fire Cylinder four would be on rocking. Now rocking means it's basically the opposite. So if you look here, the lobes are pointing exactly the opposite direction away from what these ones are. So basically these ones are pointing down, which means uh, so this is your fire exhaust. So cylinder four is in on your intake stroke. Basically what I just mentioned here. So as this one would then be exhausting, the intake stroke 
you see the lobes pointing down there, which start on this side. And if you can see, the, uh, I'm trying to get the camera in there, it's a bit tricky. But you can see, the, and that's from the three. Um, yeah, basically there. Your cam is about to start opening that valve. So as this one's going to be exhausting, right, on the next stroke, this one's going to be taking in. So you have an exhaust here while you have intake here. And that, that's, a, that's a good way to say it. So keeping in mind, you do not want to put this in a way where cylinder 1 is a TDC. Um, and as cylinder 1 is a TDC, it's actually on the intake stroke and not the exhaust stroke. So check that. That is fire 1, rock 4. You don't want to put it on rock 1, fire 4. So, so basically that basically covers the principle of that. And um, easy way to check. Like let's say your cam pulleys or gears have no marks on. You can just basically um, remove the spark plug. Obviously I'm not going to do that because I know it's already a TDC. But uh, you can remove the spark plug and then use like a long extension. Now make sure when you put a, any protrusion or marker inside there that it's not skewed. Because as that person's going to push up, it's going to, it's going to, if it catches on the side, it's going to bend that rod and possibly damage your engine. So try and avoid pushing things in there. But that is a good way to, um, you know, look where it is. So basically to recap on everything, since the one has to be on fire, the exhaust stroke would be happening right after that. Check that cylinder one is on fire and cylinder four is rocking, and with the intake um, camshaft, ensure that it is the correct amount of cycles away before the intake stroke starts. Um, and obviously, you know, factory specs are available, so always double check your work. Even if you've done that a hundred times, check that uh, your marks do align on the sides here, and you know these ones are a little bit. Uh, a higher there you know but also keep in mind you know if you look from the top here at this angle it might seem that they're off but if you look at it from a horizontal angle they might be dead on as you can see there so uh, I could probably go a little bit more but that's pretty much a good indication of there and then obviously your crank will point on TDC so that's a quick video on how to basically fire one rock four on a four cylinder twin cam engine I'll get some focus there it's a, it's a bit easier on um, four cylinders. So let's see if you go to V6. Obviously, you got to find the um, if cylinder one is firing, you want to find the one that's uh, I was firing on. I think it's uh, one five three six four two is the firing order. Um, but I'll, I'll need to double check that. So you'd basically find the opposite cylinder uh, that is on the um, the rocking stroke if I can call it that. Now rocking is not actually a stroke, it's just the positioning of the cam lobes. But I'm sure you know what I mean. Um, and obviously you know Google is your friend. Basically, uh, let's see if my uh, one here works. All the information is available on Google. Checking your valves. Let's get this light off here. Allowing you to basically uh, confirm what is needed. Um, double check your work and always uh, check that everything is in place, you know, checking out uh, your positioning and all those lovely things around there. Um, so that basically concludes the video. I really hope this helps some people. Uh, it's a really helpful skill to know, uh, to know you can check your work. And then always to prevent any damage. If you've done it this way, I highly recommend to, to rotate your engine in two full circulations twice, not once, because if you rotate it once, keeping in mind four-track engine, the camshaft does, um, Four revolutions every two revolutions, so basically two revolutions for every one revolution, which means if you rotate the engine only once, you can be on uh, rocking one, firing four. You want to do two full revolutions to get it back to fire one, rock four. And that basically concludes it. The video is getting a little bit long, but I'm pretty sure there's enough information here to help anyone uh, curious enough on how the rocking and firing position works uh, on these engines.